Hey guys, Pansy here. In this video, I'm going to go over how to do Kratuga with less AP. We're going to go over the basic requirements in terms of gear, uh, crystals, buffs, and uh, consumables, and just some other tips for you guys. And also in the end, we're going to go over the entire small room rotation and how to do the pulls and stuff. You'll hear a lot of times that you need like 261 AP to go to like Star's End or Kratuga, but that's not true. You can go a lot sooner, you just need to be able to survive. Now keep in mind, you'll get a lot less trash loot compared to someone who's like optimally geared, but it doesn't mean that it's completely a waste of time because when I went at 236 to Kratuga, I was making a lot more money than I was making anywhere else. So. Yeah, it's definitely worth giving a shot if you want to just challenge yourself. And I almost died like so many times in Kratuga. I did die. I did lose a Corrupted Crystal once. It happens, so I'll try to give you as many pointers as I can to help your um, journey in there. As for the gear, if you guys are using Liebers and Muskins or a combination of Begs and uh, Muskins, I would recommend you have at least 309 DP so you're comfortable. Even with 309, with uh, the DR build using Begs and Oregons, I still had a lot of trouble whenever I got CC'd and was using a Frenzy Drought. So yeah, I would recommend you at least have uh, 309. Now if you are going the route of um, Oregons and Begs, you could go with less DP. Just be careful and we'll go over the rest of the details after. As far as AP goes, at least 235, 236, uh, you can start off around there. Uh, it is a bit slow, but um, as you scale up in AP, it gets much easier. But that, I think that would be a good starting point. You can go in with less, it's just going to be much harder to kill. After a certain point, uh, if your AP is too low, um, it's just not worth being there because other lower end spots will net you more money. So yeah, let's move on to the crystals. Now let's talk about the crystals. When you first go into Kratuga, it's going to be difficult to get the hang of the rotation and stuff because they do knock you down quite often. You have to be very careful, you have to dodge them, you have to rotate your super armors and protections. But when you get knocked down, they hit hard if you don't have a lot of DP. So I don't want you guys to like go in with like full Jin Vipers and Elkars and risking expensive crystals if possible. So it, here's my recommendations. So here's my recommendations in terms of which crystals you should have when you go in. The most important ones are going to be the uh, Magic Crystal of Infinity Evasion for your armors. That gives you special attack evasion rate which is uh, pretty useful when you're in there because I believe the down attacks are counted as special attacks, correct me if I'm wrong. Now after, I recommend having uh, as much accuracy as you can get. Obviously don't use the BIS crystals because you risk losing them, but maybe the cheaper variants because accuracy is very important in higher end spots. Um, even in your add-ons for your skills, uh, you'll feel accuracy a lot more than just one or two AP. So definitely get those. Um, as for the rest of them, like for example, I got Hooms for the additional accuracy and stuff. For your sub weapon, you could definitely go Corrupted Magic Crystals. They're not too expensive and they give you DR and crit hit damage, so that's really useful in AP. So all in all, just make sure you're not risking bank when you're going in the first time because uh, it is a bit uh, tedious to get the hang of uh, with all the CCs and stuff and pulling efficiently but once you do get the hang of it then definitely start upgrading. I remember when I switched from my um, throwaway crystals to the accuracy build I have right now I felt a huge difference in DPS so yeah um, just first practice and then uh, once you're comfortable start upgrading your crystals. Now for consumables first of all uh, make sure you have an alchemy stone uh, always running at the very least a destruction spirit stone. If you're worried about dying in the beginning, uh, you can certainly use a guardian spirit stone for the extra tankiness. And once you're comfortable with the rotation, switch back to your AP spirit stone. That's absolutely fine guys, because um, the amount of money you're risking and the XP you might be risking is uh, definitely worth protecting, right? So now as for the consumables, definitely for food, use simple cron meal. It gives you monster AP experience and also defensive buffs which are absolutely important when you're in Kratuga for the first time. Along with the simple cron meal for drought I would recommend using a beast drought. Uh, you want to stack up as much tankiness as possible on your first time in there because when they knock you down and your DP isn't high they will clap you so uh, once you're comfortable with the uh, Kratuga itself and your DP is a bit higher uh, past the 309 bracket and stuff uh, At that point you can switch to a frenzy drought, but until then I would recommend using a beast drought 
You could use an exquisite cron meal if you want, but I never really felt it was that much better or I didn't feel any increase when I switched to it. But yeah, my recommendation is go simple cron meal, beast drought, and have an alchemy stone. And also get your villa buffs from your tent if you have it. Those are also important. If you're riding out there, um, you can definitely pick up your church buffs um, beforehand as well. But yeah, try to stack up everything and give yourself as much chance as possible to survive the CCs when you go in there for the first time. Alright guys, for the loot at Kratuga, the primary things that drop there are the tongue rat earrings from the mobs, the latents from the security event you'll see in the video, and the most important thing is the Elkar. The Elkar is used to craft the BIS, the best in slot gem for your weapon, and you do need a few things in order to actually make the gem, including this Elkar, plus a black magic crystal precision for your weapon, two forest fury, and ten magical shard, which you get by heating black magic crystals in general. So with the other stuff, uh, there are the usual black stones, um, Yuna fragments, Traveler's Map, and Forbidden Books. The sealed ruin slates are used to um, create the key to open up Pertuga when you go back next time. You need three of these, you arrange them in a um, minus shape, which I'll show you guys, and I'll make the unsealed ruin slate in order to open it. Now, Kratuga is located at Hazra Cliff. It's south of Tariff, and there is a cave a bit north uh, around over here, and this is the node manager, so you have to enter the cave and you'll get to the entrance. I'll show you guys exactly where to go and how to get there, but yeah, in order to open it, you'll need a black spirit claw. These are pretty pricey, so if you go there, make sure you're there for a few hours until you get of the slates and you're able to make a new key to enter. So let's get over there. In order to go I'm gonna start from Tariff and just auto path my way to Hazra Cliff. So we're on our way to Hazra Cliff I'm gonna show you guys the cave which you need to go into. So you just keep following up this pathway and you see the upward um, area on the left. It's the same cave you've probably come for the Awakening quest for your class. Now let's just enter. We have to go through the cave a bit to get to the entrance of Kratuga itself. All right, come on through the left. Now the next one, take a right. And a few more rooms and we'll get to the entrance. So Mash this guy down. I don't know why I stopped running there. And you take a right again here and we'll be at the entrance to the left. So this is the entrance here. Now in order to open it, like I said, you need the Black Spirit Claw or an unsealed slate. Let me just get rid of these mobs. With the sealed slates, you have to put them in a plus sign here. And you combine them, that'll give you the unsealed uh, ruined slate. So if you speak to the door or interact with the door, um, it should give you an option to exchange your Black Spirit Claw or the slate, which if you click, it creates a portal which lasts for a few minutes. So anyone else so who comes through can use the door uh, once the portal is open and you just port right in. Um, you don't have to be in a party in order to help someone else get in here. You can just uh, open the door and vice versa. Um, you don't have to be in a party in case someone else opens the door for you. Then you just call your horse with a flute. You do need a trainer's flute in order to call the horse in here. But yeah, uh, if you don't have it, you can actually park your horse uh, up on top of this hill. And if you get the right spot, I believe you can call your horse down, something like that. I haven't tried it myself, but uh, just in case you guys don't have one. Anyway, we come through the entrance over here and I'll show you how to get to the, um, the small room. So you can actually go either direction. Um, both sides will take you. Uh, let's say if we take a right here, you have to traverse through this water part. And then you come up this slope over here.
and you're here. It'll be on your right. Now you can come the other direction, it'll take you down this way, but either way. So you can park your horse here, uh, perfectly fine. You, you can park it here and drop your tent around here. Oops, let me collect it. And yeah, I'll show you the other spot as well. And we'll start the rotation from the other side, just so you guys know. And actually, I can just run there and call my horse one second. Alright, so if you want to keep your horse here, um, right here is a safe spot because the mob's aggro range isn't long enough to come over here. Uh, there's a mob over there and there's a mob over here, but yeah, neither will be able to come through that far. And the exit to Kratuga is right here. This is uh, the closest exit to that room, so if you just interact with that, it'll take you out. All right, now we're at the rotation. I'm going to buff up. I got the villa buff running. I'm going to use my simple cron meal. And as recommended, I'm going to use the beast drought. Now, when I grind here, I do use a frenzy drought with the combination of uh, spirit, perfume, and elixir. Uh, that gives me the five crit because uh, you don't get any crit from frenzy drought. But for demonstration's sake, I'm going to use this. Now, I'm going to drop my AP down just to um, show you guys with lower AP. All right, so this is gonna be a bit risky on my end, but I dropped my stats down to what I was when I started here. I think I had 309 DP, but that's fine. I really can't balance that around too much. So I'm gonna use this and try to show you guys one full round of the rotation. And afterwards I'll put on my uh, full gear and just uh, walk through each pull and how to do it in detail, okay? Let's get started. Also, I forgot to mention, uh, I am going to use the Spirit Perfume Elixir for the extra HP, just to give me some more tankiness. And just remember, if you're the same exact stats, uh, you might be doing less damage because I do have BIS Crystals and Black Star and everything. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Let's go.
All right, guys, my gear is back on. Now we're going to go over each pack and how to pull each one. But first, let's go over the mobs. Um, as you can see here, this is a big one. It's called the Belten. Uh, this is one of the mobs you'll be primarily targeting when you're in here. There are some smaller ones which uh, aren't that useful to... Uh, the smaller ones you really don't have to worry about as much. But anyway, I'm going to show you here the attack sequences. That big uh, attack there is generally the knockdown. I'm going to try to let it knock me down so you guys can see. There we go. It finally knocked us down. But it's the animation where it lifts the shield all the way up and then slams it down. Let's try to do it again. There we go. So that's what you got to watch out for. You have to um, dodge it or use a protection. But usually it's the same sequence of attacks. Um, the most dangerous pack is the one in the corner over there we'll go over. But yeah, you don't really have to kill this one, but you can if you want. I generally just skip right through because um, uh, I try to keep to the rotation. But yeah, the first pack you're going to be pulling is this one here. So this is an Elquish. The Elquish can st uh, stiffen you. But other than that, um, they're also really good to kill because of the drops. And you pull them to the side over here. And you start killing them at this corner. So kill them with the bell 10. Your primary goal overall throughout this entire um, rotation or just in Kratuga in general is to pull the small ones to the big one, okay? Now we move on to the next pack. So here you're going to see the first of the worm mobs. You'll see it pop out of the ground. Uh, let me actually show you. So what he does is, what it does right here is it shoots a beam at you and puts a debuff on you. So that debuff will reduce your AP by 10. So what you want to do is whenever you come in, you want to kill that one first. Actually, let me see if I, I died. We'll come back around and I'll show you again in the next round. But yeah, you generally come in here, you proc that one, make it come alive, you pull the rest, and then you try to nuke it down. You can block the beam with frontal guards and stuff, but if you super armor, you'll still get debuff. So you have to dodge it or kill it fast enough or uh, frontal guard it. Now, if you ever miss that Elquish, from the final pull, you can pull it with this rotation as well or with the next one. Now, if you want to pull it with the next rotation, I'll show you in the next round uh, just so I can get a complete idea of each pull. So when you're done with that rotation, you're coming here, you pull these guys here and you come to the side because there's two Elquishes right here. The thing about Elquishes and even the Bellatons is you have to hit them with a skill, guys. If you just walk close to them, they have a really slow animation to uh, come to life. So if you attack them or use a skill to actually hit them, they come to life a lot quicker. So that's the important thing you have to remember when pulling in Kratuga. Now you come to the door rotation. Uh, now you come to the door pack over there. So with this one, you have to uh, decide if you want to pull those on the side. Uh, I usually skip them. They're not really a big deal. But yeah, you hit this one. You use a skill on the Bellaton, bring him out, and also hit these two in the side over here and stack them up and nuke them down it's important to get as much back attack damage as possible because um, that makes a big difference in your uh, kill speed now for the most dangerous pack that's the water pack this one is the most dangerous because there's two bulletins um, they both can knock you down and just keep you on the ground and just smash you with a lot of damage so when you want to pull you come all the way here get all the ones on the side you pull the ones that were here and then try to get behind the Belton and start doing your rotation. As soon as they turn, you want to be able to get out of the way just so you can um, dodge their down smashes and their knockdowns. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, you just want to be really careful in this pull. This is the only pull that's killed me and the pull that gave me the most trouble every single time I came to close to death. Every time I was close to death, it was because of this pull, guys. So the thing is, if one of the uh, little mobs over here is still alive, because sometimes it doesn't aggro or it aggro late, um, it's annoying to stop and killing. Uh, it's annoying to stop and kill it. So you can just um, ignore it and run through. If it is dead, I like to come around this way. Now there is a little ledge here which prevents you from going, so you have to go around. So if that one is dead, I'd like to go around here. If it's not dead, I like to go around here. The reason being is if I go around here, I can pull the ones on the wall and then come back, 
pull the ones here and then uh, come to the Belton and the Elkwish over here. Now, if that mob was not dead, I would come through here and start pulling these right away because I wouldn't pull the ones on the wall. They're not very high priority because they're just, uh, um, they're the small ones and they don't really drop much. Um, and they're not really high priority, so it's okay. Now for the last corner, um, there are a few ways you can do this. Me, I tried to pull these over here without aggroing these, but they got a pretty decent aggro range, so it's difficult. I do it using uh, uh, my mystic skill, but I don't know how it's gonna be for all of your classes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the basic pull where you do pull these and kill everything here. But yeah, I prefer not to pull those because it saves me some time and they're usually, you know, pretty worthless. But for this example, I'll go ahead and kill it. And there we go. So now when you come to the last one, you can choose to pull that guy or not. Uh, that's up to you. Um, they are good to kill if you're looking for the loot. But anyway, when you pull this, there is a worm over here. So there's two options. You can pull this and come over here and just start staggering your rotation a bit. Or you can just go ahead and jump this guy and kill him first. So, and then you can kill the ones in the middle here. The reason why I was pulling these two Elkwish without aggroing those is so I can pull him and then I'll have just enough to pull uh, the ones over here and this uh, Elkwish over here without aggroing this because I'll be at the mob limit. But um, I'll show you that next round. Now, if you mess up that pull I was talking about where you're getting only the Elkwish and if you do get one or two extra mobs and you're not able to pull the Elkwish over here, you can uh, go ahead and uh, kill everything you pulled over here and then aggro both of these. The worms can't move, so you can aggro both of these, bring the Elkwish with you to the corner pull over here. Since we already killed those uh, when I was talking earlier, that's fine. So we'll just kill these and I'll tell you about the next rotation here. So yeah, there is a worm over here guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull everything here and onto the worm and kill the worm first. Bad fingered. Oh yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> And right, if the Elkwish over here is spawned, you can pull that one with the rest of these. I'll show you how after it respawns because there is a certain range it has where if you go too far, you won't be able to pull it. If you go too far this side, some of the smaller mobs also de-aggro. So I'm going to show you that uh, perfect spot to pull them right here in the middle and that'll give you a good example. So while I was waiting for the mobs to spawn, this is the security event, perfect timing. When the security event starts, it's technically the mobs are falling from the sky or something, but they just show up. Um, there's going to be five groups of these statue mobs where they look like they're mid pose. There's one over here, one there, one in the pool, and two near the entrance side. So we have to kill them within two minutes or something. Uh, I don't remember the exact time, but if you kill them all, it'll trigger the next phase of the event. Because I was um, uh, paused to, I was taking a pause to show you guys, I'm gonna have to buff up here just so I don't um, um, lose out on the time. So let's just try to kill these as quick as possible and proc the next part of the security event and show you guys how to kill those mobs. So whenever you're doing the security event, you want to make sure you're not leaving this pool mob for the last one because the second part of it spawns at the last after the last set are killed. And if you do that, you're going to risk yourself taking a lot of damage from the two Bellatons already there. And there's two other mobs which spawn once you kill the security, once you proc the security event. So it's really risky to do it over there, but once you're geared, it's absolutely fine. 
All right, we killed the fourth one. Now the final one over here. You can do this at, in any order, guys. You just have to make sure you kill all five packs uh, before the time limit runs out. Don't try to pull the mobs elsewhere because sometimes it might uh, bug out and they don't follow you properly and you might miss out on the event. So for the second part, there's gonna be two mobs, a giant Elquish and a giant Bellaton. Uh, these are nothing special just watch out for cc's and just go ahead and uh, kill it as you see the elk beach can still stifle you or stiffen you and yeah just uh kill them as they are um you don't have to worry about time limit after they spawn um you've satisfied that requirement from that point now the final phase is the Layton. this guy can drop the latent power this guy is what drops the latent necklace and he does CC you, he does good damage and he is a bit tankier than the rest. So he does have some range attacks there so you just want to keep uh, uh, the fight up close and keep getting back attacks on him. And yeah, as you can see he can knock you down. But yeah, let's uh, kill him here and see if we get a uh, latent. So my droughts uh, died out, and yeah. All right, he's almost dead now. Let's see if we are lucky. Nope, no luck, but that's fine. Uh, he does drop Kafras and Ancient Spirit Dust and a lot of trash loot compared to normal mobs, so um, it's still worth it if it, it doesn't drop up. So it's still worth it. Alright, we were interrupted by the security event, but now I'm going to show you guys the pull with that Elkwish in, uh, in case you didn't get to pull it in the other two spots. So here we go. So you come in here, you aggro it, and you run away. From that uh, worm mob try to evade that beam so you don't get debuffed and then you come to the side over here and you pull it over here but you want to come over to the middle the center point over here so nothing de -aggros. and just stack it up and this way you'll get all three of the Elkwishes. The Elkwishes and the Belltons are the priority in here um, they are what you need to kill for the best chance at loot um, but yeah Basically, you pull that one, you pull all the mobs over here, and then you pull them to the side here. Uh, I didn't get to pull everything properly because I was going slow to show you guys, but you would have seen from the other footage on which direction you need to pull from. But yeah, that's about it. Um, I think we've gone over pretty much everything we need to go over with this rotation. Uh, it just takes practice, guys. Go slowly. Perfect your pulls because um, if you die, you are risking XP and crystals, so and also tears if you have them. But yeah, just be careful in that corner pull over there. That's the most riskiest of the pulls, and that's where everyone dies, and that's the notorious spot. But if you can get that one down, the rest of the room's really easy, and it just takes practice. Be careful, and yeah, get some good RNG. Yeah, hopefully you guys get all cars and some Tungrads and Leightons and best of luck with your RNG over here. At this spot really served me well and I hope it helps you guys as well. Alright guys, that's it for this video. I hope it helped and yeah, let me know how it goes in the comment section down below. Check out my Discord channel, it's been popping off lately. And please do like, comment, and subscribe if this helped. Uh, follow me on twitch.tv slash impansy as well. That's where I stream. I stream on YouTube as well guys, so... Join me anywhere. Anyway, take it easy guys. I'll catch you guys next time.